I'm still putting my microphone on, so you're probably getting the rustling of the microphone because I'm trying to move it away from my, my operations microphone. Because we're over here at the Retro Arcade and Fascination. We are open, and this is the Main Street Randyland YouTube channel. Hooray! <laughs> and you know, the video guy came, he says, can we do some, some videos this morning? I said, yeah, I'm not gonna open until six o'clock. So I told him I'd meet him up here at two. So I got over here, and there were some people at my door looking in, and they were here last night, and they left a sweater, and they said they were gonna be going home tonight. And I said, well, you can come in if you wanna play. We'll turn everything on. So I ended up opening, and here we are. Then he came up. We couldn't shoot video because there was a whole line of people playing Fascination, and they were over here playing ski ball, and the place was jumping. So it finally slowed down, and now we can do a video. And look, one remaining person. This is Dennis. Dennis Flynn. Stand up, Dennis. Stand up. I was just here, and there was like, how many, how many, 50, 60 people in here? Well, there weren't and 50 they, or 60, but they, there were quite a few. Had, yeah. Quite a few. I had to sign a few autographs, but I don't mind at all. Dennis. Randy is a great host. Dennis he's thinks host. he's the man, the myth, the legend. You might have seen him on Facebook under Dennis Flynn. You gotta check it out. You know, Dennis has been on the boardwalk since he was a little tyke, and he yeah. actually used to work games on the boardwalk. Yeah, the and, original and used water guns. The water guns. The original like water that. guns and then dealer's choice that was on um, up the street from where we lived on 25th Street. Wow, well, you were down by Fascination. Fascination. When they used to have yes. Fascination down there on 24th yeah. Street. Fascinating. Yeah. Well, Dennis, you know, did you see those people playing skee ball over there before? Yes. I'm going to show my viewers what happens when people play skee ball. It's not all fun. You wouldn't believe it. So come on over. You will see the magic, the magic of skee ball. Do you know there are many models of skee ball? When I was a kid, the prevalent model skee ball was the Philadelphia Toboggan 14 foot skee ball with the Rolodex flip scores. They were all over the place. They were the standard. But there was ski ball before that, made by Wurlitzer and a few other companies that had ski ball. And they might have called it a different thing, like ski roll or, you know, whatever different names they gave it. I remember in Playland and Lavalette, they had some really old ski balls. They were all wood and, you know, they had lights that scored, you know, advanced lights like the old you know, mechanical pinballs back then of the 50s. But the boardwalk had the Philadelphia toboggan ones. They used to pull the handle and make the scores return. They were really, I have a lot of them. To me, that's ski ball. When we got to the 80s, they started with digital score ski balls, which was really neat. Everybody was now into digital because pinball was coming out with digital scores. So they made digital displays and computerized running them. And the first digital ski balls were your Model D. And they were made by Ski Ball, but they used a company called Deltronic Labs, who made the electronics for the Ski Ball company who put them into their machines. So then quickly it became a Model E. So D's and E's are actually using almost the same exact equipment. Very slight differences between D's and E's. You can actually interchange the computer between the D and an E. After that, I think they jumped to an H. I don't think there was a G. I mean, there'll be people out there saying, oh, there was a G and there was an I. I know of an H. These are H's. I have the old Rolodex A's and B's. I have D's and E's. These are H's. There's eight of them. I'm only using four of them here right now. And then after that came an S. And the S was taking any evolution away some of the problems from the D's, the E's, and the H's. But the S's had their own problems. So actually the H, in my opinion, is the best of the digital ski balls. D's and E's, you can keep running forever because they're using that 7400 series chips with the TTL. They even use read relays rather than triax and you know things of this nature. But the H's really have lasted pretty well. Do you know, funny story, Dennis, ski ball didn't have sound. No. When we were kids, they didn't have I sound. I remember when oh, Chuck Jaffe, Chuck Jaffe on Sportland Pier yeah. had his ski ball. And they were 10 cents. 
Yeah, and they had the under, yeah. Now, well, I'm looking at the uh, ski ball here, yeah. and they had the little, the little, um, the like stick that would come up, yeah. and then, well, to get a free game, I can tell you now how you do it. You smack your hand on it and pull it back. Well, or you use you know the what? Pitch. He's actually correct. Yeah. Because originally, when you put your coin in it and you pull the handle back. You could cheat the machine by hitting the side of the handle yes. and it would cause the lever that the dime would make weight to fall down so it was very lightweight. It would cause it to jiggle yes. and you could get it to go down. Ski ball changed that by taking the lever, here's the lever, and they drilled a hole through the lever and they put a screw on both sides that was fancy and it was finished with a point. So you couldn't hit it without hurting your hand. Okay, but the problem with that now was people would grab it with two fingers and yank it back quick, the big boop boo. But what happened then, the score would reset real quick, it would swing back, and there was a quad gear made of cast aluminum that the paw gear would flip the quad gear, pulling it back to return the scores. Well, it would crack the quad gear down at the axle and you would have to replace the quad gear from people yanking it so hard so quick. So it would cost the repair and those quad gears were very expensive. They haven't made them for years. I'm sure somebody could remake them today, but back in the day a quad gear towards the end was like $80 back in the day when money was money. You know, God knows what that would be today to replace a quad gear just to buy it. So that's all gone. You don't drop, you don't pull the thing. Now you just drop it and it's done electronically ever since the electronic motions. Now, I'm dating myself back to the 80s here because ski ball was a quarter. Now here's another funny story for a ski ball. When I was a kid, and I'm a little bit older than Dennis, ski ball had been a nickel when I started and then it quickly became a dime. It was a dime for a long time. Right. What happened then was they were trying to get out of that dime. The next step from a dime is a quarter. That's two and a half times the price. That's a big jump. It's hard to get people to go from a dime to a quarter. So what they did was somebody got the idea, let's make the option on ski ball where you could put in a dime or a quarter. You could choose. If you put in a dime, you got regular score tickets. If you put in a quarter, you got triple score tickets. So it was an incentive to spend a quarter. You know who invented that? No idea. Our friend Walter Foreman, who used to run Olympic Fascination oh, wow. down here in Wildwood, yeah. he invented the dime quarter upgrade to the ski ball machines. And he made them under the name of Greyhound Electronics, which was their little old company because they made the Greyhound race game back in the day. So he, he sold these kits to all the different arcades up and down the New Jersey Shore. And there was an extra feature to it. Instead of pulling the handle, which pulled the cable, which pulled that quad gear, he put a motor that slowly pulled the cable and reset the game. So the electronics of the dime quarter dropping the coin energized the motor, would pull the cable slowly and surely back, eliminating the problems of people yanking the cable. So it was really pretty good. The funny thing about this is he took his kit to the IAPA show, the International Association of Amusement Parks and Attractions, to sell the kits to people who had ski ball all across the country because he sold them to everybody in New Jersey, he figured he's gonna sell them all across the country. Nobody bought them. He couldn't figure out why nobody would buy them. It's a no-brainer, why wouldn't you buy them? Then he spoke with some of the operators from different areas in the country. Guy in Texas said, we've been charging a quarter for ski ball for the last 10 years. Why would we do dime quarter? New Jersey was so behind the times of charging a dime that he had to make this invention to go dime quarter. Everywhere else other than New Jersey was a quarter a decade before that. They weren't interested in charging a dime or a quarter. They were already a quarter. Their step already was to 50 cents. So it's weird how that happens. New Jersey was always very, very inexpensive for ski ball. Ski ball was invented in New Jersey. Did you know that? Oh. <coughs> well, Supposedly a guy in Vineland invented it 
And, you know, so I guess he sold the idea to Philadelphia to Morgan. But it made a big, big debut on the Atlantic City Boardwalk. And Ski Ball originally was so big that it was like a bowling alley, a real bowling alley. And the nets hung from the ceiling like curtains draping down. And the, the rings were way up in the air. After that, they started becoming the size that could be in arcades. And they've shrunk over the years. These are 12 foot ski balls, okay? They also make them in a 10 foot model and an eight foot model. They've shrunk over the years, but the standard was 14. Now I originally had 14s here, but I don't have that much space. So after a couple years, I switched to my shorter ski balls, which aren't too short, you can still enjoy it. And it's not like you're right up at the hole. You know they make one where there is no lane and you just throw the balls into the rings for little kids? I'm serious, huh. they make one like that. Now we just had a bunch of kids playing skee ball over here. And the reason I wanted to do this video was I took a look over when I was done with Fascination and I saw my ski balls are now in a disaster state. Not one of these ski balls is in proper play position. None of the scores are flashing. This score is scrambled and it's just not playable. So now I gotta find out the reasons why. This has a score of 60. Now you'll notice there's some sections out on the scores. That's because Deltronics, in order to make large size LED displays, couldn't use LEDs. Today they can. Back then, that's a mask with an incandescent bulb in it. And the bulb sockets heat up and they loosen up and that's why you lose sections because the vibration and the heat, bulbs break but they're actually bulbs, making it look digital, still digital controlled. But if I put a quarter in this machine, I know I'm not gonna get nine balls. I know it, let's see. There's two balls left in my skee ball machine. Why? Now, typically, typically skee ball is nine balls. Some places will actually run skee ball for six balls. If I'm running nine balls, I usually have at least nine balls in the machine, 10, 11, so that there's extra if somebody loses a ball. How do you lose a ball on skee ball? By throwing it like a madman. A lot of times, people will toss the skee ball. You won't even believe this. They'll take the ball, and instead of rolling the ball, they'll toss the ball into the holes. But when you do that, they toss it too high, and it lands on the top. So there's usually balls on the top. You see, I even knocked the net off. I mean, it's, it's just maddening, it's maddening. Ski ball, the definition of ski ball is to ski it. So it goes up. A lot of the ski balls you see today have a net in the front or a plexiglass in the front, so you can't toss the ball. You have to roll it underneath. I don't do that. These were made for it. I don't do that because it looks awful. You're looking through a net. I'm old fashioned. They never had that when I was a kid. You looked at the rings. I don't want to look at a net and roll under it. Yes, it would avoid the tossing, but I'm a purist. So now I got to climb up the ski ball like a little kid. And I walk up the lane. I got to fix my net. And I got my ball. Now, so I got two balls in this ski ball machine. Where are the other balls? They're not on the top. Well, this machine is scrambled. So I'm going to put a quarter in, I'm going to get nothing. Do I know my ski ball machines? Do I know? Look, I'll put a quarter in, I'll get nothing. Because I know it's scrambled. So, I have to reset it. I put a switch on the top so I can reset it. That's normal. Rotation. Now, when I put a quarter in, theoretically, I should get some balls. <laughs> the hole is at the nine ball mark. So if I see a ball there, I know I got nine balls. So, if I take out nine balls, theoretically, if I put in another quarter, if there's more balls in here, I should get more balls. 
a whole nother nine balls are in this machine and balls beyond it because I heard them come up. So I got two in here, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we know that has nine. How many more balls are in this machine? Three more. Okay. Well, let's make sure this machine has nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look at me. I got them jammed up in the hole because I did it so quick. Another thing for ski ball. See that? They're stuck in the hole. Okay. I still have five extra balls, one in Dennis's hand. This machine is only showing five on the last play. Look at that. Five balls in the machine. Five balls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I bet you one of my balls is going to come back again. Do I know my machines? Because this machine uses a different type of ball stopper. The other ones have a teeter-totter. This one has a latch flap, and the latch flap spring is weak. So the last ball often hits the back ball and passes the last flap. So I usually have an extra ball on that one. This machine is showing only six balls. How many balls are here? Not nine. How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's only one extra ball. Seven. <clears throat> now, I'm two balls short. I know I had more than nine balls in every one of those skee ball machines. Now, only three have nine, one has seven. Where's all the other balls? Well, they must be around somewhere. Well, let's move this whack-a-mole machine. See if we get lucky. Look at that. Here's one of them. Now we got eight. Three little pigs. Now we got nine. Couldn't there be more? Look at that. Two more. So three of them went in the little pigs. One went in the whack-a-mole. So we'll put an extra one here. And this one, I know the extra weight will push it through. So we'll put an extra one there. I know I'm still missing balls. Because now I only have two extra. I know I had more balls. So where did they go? I'm using the plastic composite so that people don't steal my ski balls. If I was still using my wooden ski balls, they'd be gone because they'd be on eBay for $100 a ball. People, they actually charge this kind of stuff on eBay. People, they're probably underneath and I'm not going to pull this all apart to try to find more balls. Oh, look, there's one in there. Can you see in that crack? So yes, there are some ski balls hiding underneath. On the top of the machines, you can usually, if I can find it, I usually have something up here to help me. There we go, there's a Phillips. Oh, did you see what somebody gave me here? A customer brought that in the other day. They had a custom made, presented to Main Street Randy Land for reaching 100 episodes of Randy's collection on the Main Street Randy Land YouTube channel. Isn't that nice? So we got our screwdriver. The reason we have a screwdriver is underneath here, there are slides. You see these, you turn them and they loosen the, the, the glass. There's usually one on each side, that one's not even on, but they never hold the glass, they always flip out. So I use a screw because the screw never comes out, even if you got a screwdriver. All right. Now you have the inside of an S. This is polycarbonate, not plexiglass, so it will take a beating. Here's your H board over here. This is your proverbial H board. 
Deltronic Labs. Look at that. H. Model H. Wonder what I have that paper towel there for. All right. Well, now I see why I had the paper towel there. This chip here has corroded. You see that? Right in its socket. Now, the rest of the board actually looks pretty good. But for whatever reason, this chip got it. There is no battery on this board, so it's not that. And these traces have rotted probably underneath there also. So this board has a problem and it was taken out of service because I don't have time right now to take that chip out, repair all the damage underneath, put a new socket in and replace the chip. But there should be nothing else wrong with that board. These are your selections for your scores, your power input. This goes over to your other lines. So it's always good to have a few extra boards around. I saw somebody was selling one of these on eBay recently. A mere thousand dollars. Should always pick up a few. You have three main components of the H. Your power board, your main board, and your display board. Now, put my tissue here back so I know that's what the problem was. Here's your mask. The mask will come off. It's held on with banana plugs. The bulbs actually go in to the mask and light up the different sections of the digit. So it's actually just bulbs. These bulbs here, see that? It wasn't burnt out, it's loose. They're wedge bulbs, you pull them out. But these sockets, they get old, they get hot from the heat and it doesn't stay. So you can tighten them, see that? This one's out. Now that might be a bulb, let's try another bulb. Yep, there's just a bulb. No good. So do we have another bulb here? That one's no good either. Do we have any others sitting here? Here's one. No. Well, I guess we gotta go in the bag. Are these bulbs? I feel like bulbs. No, these are replacement LEDs. And I can't use these on this machine because it will stay lit. Uh, I might be able to get away with it here. Not sure about that. No, it's not gonna work. LEDs do not work on model H and S displays because they are driven by these chips. And if you use an LED, it will lock it on. So somewhere I got bulbs for these that are good. I'll have to find it. But these LEDs will not work on these models. That's why they're still in the bag. Here's some extra switches. These are for down inside the hole. They're backwards to coin switches. See that a coin switch usually is up here. It goes down like that. These are backwards. They go down like that in order to work in the holes. The ball triggers the switch. That's how it scores the machine. Two wing nuts. The whole unit comes out. There's your power supply. When I bought these machines, I bought them when I was down at Flipper's Fascination. And I was going to do a play and win a score for a big prize ski ball. So I made a big sign that said, meet or beat score of 320, you get choice of the stand. And I had nice big animals up there. And I made it dollar to play. Well, they're putting in quarters. So I don't want people to tell me they put in four quarters and maybe they didn't. So these lights on the top became like a multiplier. It would start with white. When you put in one quarter, it would stay white. Second quarter would advance to yellow, green, blue. So I knew how many coins you put in on your machine. The red light was for a fifth quarter if you put in too many. I'm not operating those right now because I'm simply operating in general in the arcade quarter to play. 
but these machines were upgraded with special mechanics that I put in them behind the machine that will operate for special multiplier use. When you saw this display scramble, was that because there wasn't enough balls in it? Is that why it scrambled? There's many reasons it'll scramble. Something is confusing the computer. In this instance, there were way too many balls in there and were holding down switches so the machine didn't know what you wanted to do. So it can scramble for other reasons. Uh, the way the ball bounced on the switch, it, it, it bounced it too hard or it didn't do it right and the machine couldn't figure it out and it was scrambled. It's really, it shouldn't do that. They built too many safeties into it. I wish it didn't have that. Just keep running. But that's an alert for the operator to go over and fix it as long as you know what you're doing. So I'm about to put the mask back on and these are a real bother because these sockets are so fragile. Look, I got that LED to light. Now it's gonna be too bright, but it really doesn't work on these models. So I put it on the side so it's all right. You gotta line up your banana holes. See these banana parts? They clip into the holes here, but you gotta get the bulbs through the holes. It's not easy. Just right. And see now this went out. It's on now, look, it came out, you see that? Now it fell in there. I'm gonna leave that out. Come on. So we got one there. Lost the screw. Here it is. Twenty-three, the magic number. So with that, I'm going to leave you. We did a nice long episode telling you all about ski ball and different models. And best of all is have fun with your ski ball machine. People can play ski ball. You can have a ski ball at home. It doesn't work just for fun. Just roll the balls, keep score. It's great anyway. Everybody loves ski ball. So with that, we'll see you next time on the Main Street Randy Van YouTube channel. See more of Dennis Flynn, Sir Flynn, the main, the myth, the legend, just let me know.